to the cloud. Cool. All righty. Um, let's get this party started. Hello, welcome to another fun, exciting edition of the CPC meeting. Um, this is a regular meeting, so that means we're going to go through all of the issues that were tagged with the CPC agenda tag on our um, GitHub org, and um, and and kind of go go that way. One of the things we do need to do today which I'll put at the end for any other business is figure out what topics we want to cover in our working sessions for me. As always, yours truly has ideas for you, but it's up to us. So uh, we'll, we'll cover that, of course, when we get there. Um, let's go to announcements. Announcements. Who's got announcements? Obviously, we always have announcements about OpenJS World this time of year. So um, in case you haven't done so already, we're really hoping that uh, everyone has registered for OpenJS World. Um, we did get the speakers announced on our website this week. And so we're really excited about that as well as some of the Slack channels and stuff are starting to get set up. So if you wanna do some pre-event conversation about the topics or um, talk to some of the speakers, that kind of thing, um, join us in those Slack channels. And of course, there's still space for community talks from our projects because we're doing this like Netflix style on demand. It's really easy for us to make sure that we're covering all of the content from our projects that they might have to share. So if, you, if you've got something from one of your projects and, and want to make some space for a lightning talk or a short session or something like that, we can do that. Let us know. So those are, those are kind of our OpenJS world related things. Um, and the other little thing that I have is that tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern, which is definitely earlier than I like to have any meetings at all, but still it's worth it. We're gonna be talking with um, Marcos Caseros, who's the new, uh, he's a new W3C employee, but he's the chair of the spec editors uh, community group. Um, and he lives in Australia, so hence getting up at 8 a.m. Um, and we're going to talk about that exciting community group and record it so that our, the rest of our standards working group community can watch it later. But you're welcome to catch that live. And the link to all of that info is in the uh, standards repository. So if you want to get up early and talk to um, the nicey, nicest Aussie in all of the W3C, uh, Marcos, join me. I will be highly caffeinated at that hour. Um, project announcements, anything like that? Whales, winds, what what have yous? Um, I mean, I haven't, I'm not ready to release it yet, but the next version of MVM um, will actually have limited Windows support beyond just WSL, like PowerShell and Git Bash and stuff. Um, um, I'm using very hedged, you know, fuzzy words around it, like maybe and things like that, because uh, I expect a flood of bug reports and I have no way to test them myself because I have no Windows machines. But uh, if it, assuming that it works, uh, then that, you know, a lot more people would be able to use NVM. That's exciting. Congrats. Pre preemptively, congrats. And also preemptively, like, you know, condolences for the bug reports that you will likely get. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, that takes us down to board meeting updates. Um, Sarah and or Michael, y'all wanna share any fun stuff? Uh, we, we had the, um, the board audit and finance committee meeting just before this meeting. So we did discuss the, the request around the um, travel fund and there's gonna be a recommendation made back to the board. Uh, so hopefully we'll have an update on, on that. Um, as, as we mentioned before, you know, the discussion was positive. So, you know, we, but just that we'll have closure on that fairly soon. Awesome. And let's see, that's it from that. Now I guess we can move on to our, um, our, our regularly scheduled slate of issues. Our first issue is issue number 747. And um, this is for a call for Slack moderators and volunteers for our at newly formed at moderators team on our Slack, uh, Slack organization. Um, we want this for like two purposes. One is the long-term sort of ongoing 
uh, a year from now and sooner, like if, if somebody has something that they need help with or they see something that looks spammy or whatever, they can just at tag at moderators and whether Joy's online or Brian's online, this team would be able to like clean it up and handle that. The second um, need is actually more imminent for OpenJS world. What we're hoping to have is a team of, of us who are able to just help um, you know, keep things clean and safe for our OpenJS world attendees who may be joining to participate, particularly in those chat channels around the tracks that we have and to help MC and moderate those channels when we have the speakers available for Q&A. So, um, this is my request. I know not everybody may be available to do the moderation on the day of the event, but if you think you would be around and available to do it longer term, um, you know, we can get you added there. Or um, if, uh, if you'd like to raise your hand to, to serve as a MC for one of the channels, we'd love to have you too. Um, questions or comments or observations, concerns, volunteers? I would just add that we, we uh, have identified four different time zone chunks um, where we're going to invite our moderators slash MCs and our speakers to sign up for. That way we can hit um, uh, every region around the world. So um, if you live in another region and you can sign up for a time that's convenient to you, um, or if you're here and would love to backfill some of those hard hours and other time zones, we'd appreciate that as well. So uh, I will add those time slots on the issue. Okay, so um, if there's not any other questions, um, I know some of you've already like privately volunteered with me. Thank you so much. But otherwise, you know, ping me in Slack or, or just raise your hand on the, um, on the issue and we will get you um, get you all signed up. Honestly, doesn't doesn't look like it's gonna be a heavy lift, but uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to add. All right, um, that moves us to um, a probably trickier and lengthier topic. And um, this is issue number 745, the voting CPC members election. So um, as you all, uh, may recall in our um, in our in our charter, what we do is have a couple of representatives from all of the CPC members elect uh, folks to represent them on the in the voting CPC members group. And we need to run two different elections, as Emily points out, one for the non-impact projects and the other one for um, the regular members. So this is something that typically um, myself and Brian Warner as foundation staff execute. Um, we have talked about finding ways to automate this so that we could, uh, we, we don't miss the election windows as we have done in the past. Um, and then also to, uh, we need perhaps to add some language to make it more clear that like in the event that we accidentally miss that, that window as we have in this case, that um, it, we, we don't go without these representatives that they serve until the next election is run, for example. Um, so a couple of different sort of hygiene things that this issue has, has um, popped up. So I think um, the first thing that's very tactical and practical is we need to open a nomination issue for both of these spots. Um, and then where we, um, where we may have multiple parties nominate Run the run that election. Um, other, you know, insights or or observations here. This is what the second or third time we've done this one now, so it starts to feel a bit more routine. So, so I guess my only question is what's the next step in terms of kicking off the elections? Has somebody got the ball for starting that? Unless there's something we want to, to do from a process perspective um, differently, then I would suggest that the next step is to open the call for nominations. Um, we can 
uh, do that on an issue and then also send it out to our projects list as we have often done in the past um, and kind of go from there. Um, typically that's been the CPC chair that kicks that off and um, obviously Joe's out today and we may want to go ahead and get this um, get this going so I can I can certainly um, copy pasta um, a past uh, past language to open this up. But I don't want to lose the the insights obviously that uh, we've highlighted here one being a need for, yeah, you know, the language that may help us in the event that we make this mistake in the past and in the future. And the second being um, a way to automate these issues so that we don't accidentally do it again. Because, <laughs> you know, we probably will. Okay. Um, Alrighty, well, so, and also if, if I could just request somebody help take some notes here. Um, I'm trying to uh, do that. I'm just taking a note that you volunteered to, to <laughs> treat the issues, right? Yeah. I went to go do the, the, add the, the um, minutes from some of our last couple meetings and realized we hadn't done so good about taking taking actual notes. So uh, probably time to pester on that again. Thanks, Michael. Okay. All right. Um, okay, well, I suppose uh, if there's nothing further on 745, we can move onward. Um, the next issue on our list is issue 744. This is an issue to remove growth project distinction on the OpenJS Foundation website. And this one feels... Um, Seems like a Brian issue. Yeah. Seems like Brian ought to be doing that right now during the CPC meeting. <laughs> and in fact, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take care of that right now. Okay. It's like, who's, Sorry, to say, who's to say Brian didn't already do it? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been to the website today. Uh, so great. Well, don't go for another 10 minutes, okay? Okay. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. No problem. Cool. Um, great, great. So issue 725, add travel fund allocation for 2021. So this is the update that, that Michael just helpfully gave from the um, audit and finance committee meeting, which was like literally ended right before this call. So the, the freshest news possible was delivered unto y'all. Yep. Um, and it looks like we're gonna have um, next steps and closure on this soon. So uh, thank you, Michael and Sarah. All right, issue 699. Um, this, let me scroll down and see what is the latest on this. So, okay, um, Sarah, Toby's really the one running point on, on this. Do you know um, the issue hasn't been updated since we last met? Do you have, have any updates? I don't, but Toby and I are meeting to to uh, are meeting some time to talk about it. So that's what I got. Um, I think it might be worth having a, like a circle up so we can figure out strategy. Um, would, would you like us to take this um, agenda? Off? Okay, we can take it off. We can take the label off. We'll leave the issue open, obviously. But then y'all can put the label back on when they when you're ready to report something back to the. CPC regular. Yeah, that sounds great. Cool. Yeah, I can get one update on my wall. I think right now, just so you know, if you hear that scratching, if, if you see me get attacked by a squirrel, that's <laughs> great. Um, just a quick update. If you all saw, I think there was a blog last week. The Linux Foundation is building out a research uh, division. Um, I've met a couple of times with the new. Uh, head of research um, and flagged our request to do some DEI stuff as well. Um, I know it's maybe not the, going to be super early on on the editorial agenda, but it will come. 
but anyways, we can follow up when we have that other meeting, but. That's cool, very neat. Cool. Yeah, that'll be great if we can get additional support on that. That's cool. Um, the uh, next item is 632. Uh, this is provide implementation guidance for DCO slash CLA. Um, this has been sort of open for a while because we are working with an open source maintainer on updating the ProBot DCO. Um, so we don't expect it to move terribly quickly, but just in case, Brian, do you have an update on this? Yeah, so I, I've been talking a bit with, um, with the maintainer and also with some other folks who work on ProBot. Um, the maintainer is busy, uh, but has said that they are <clears throat> able to review it hopefully sometime soon. Um, I am trying to get some other eyes on this as well, because that, that may also help lighten the load, um, just basically making sure that the, the PR, which is non-trivial, uh, admittedly, uh, making sure that it is actually going to do what it's supposed to do. So um, if anybody would like to volunteer to do an unsolicited code review on it, that would also be cool. Um, but at this point, I, it's, it's one of these things where it's, you know, it's, it's out of our direct hands. Um, and we're just going to, I guess, have to continue to wait for uh, for them to have the time to really get through it. All right. Well, thank you for your patience and working through that. And obviously, um, you know, uh, thanks to the ProBot team too for yeah. their patience with us. Um, Okay, that takes us actually to the end of our uh, tagged agenda issues. We do have things that were called out for any other business um, because um, we didn't quite get an issue filed with the right tag in time before this thing agenda was generated. Um, and, and that big, big kind of exciting thing is uh, anticipating the graduation of some of our upcoming, our, our incubating projects in VM slash Jordan is one of them. Um, Jordan's got a project charter for our review. Um, and I think this is basically the last piece um, we, we met earlier this week. Yeah. So I just dropped the link to the charter in the Zoom chat. Um, it's not on the main NVM repo. It's on my personal fork. So you, it's like public. It's just not advertise. Um, I'm, I was waiting to push it up to the main repo until uh, Robin and Jory had kind of given me the go ahead to do that. Uh, but it, I think it's pretty much ready. So feel free to review it now. Um, it's largely, I basically just took Fastifies and like replaced the project name and, you know, took out some sections that didn't really apply. And, you know, so it's, it's, um, it should be very similar to that. And given that there's a single maintainer and no team structure or anything like that. It's, it's a much simpler uh, governance <laughs> at the moment. So um, we do require a majority of our, um, our, our CPC members to thumbs that up. Um, so please take, a, take your time and, and go mosey on over and, and review. Um, so we can get that uh, last checklist item done for NVM. The other two projects are anticipating their chart. I'm anticipating getting copies of their charters for, for you all really soon. So um, be on the lookout for that. If we can get those approved as part of our kind of last mile thing, then we can, we'll, we'll be um, well on track for uh, just celebrating their graduation at OpenJS World, which we would be very excited to do. In terms of visibility, have we, I'm, I'm trying to remember, have we opened an issue in the CPC repo that says, please approve this charter over here? And then we can at mention the CPC members, because I'm not sure we can do that on the issue that's in the MVM repo. The issue, the, uh, the, the checklist we're using is actually in the CPC, the, like the uh, project, project status repo, um, which is owned by the OpenJS Foundation. Uh, so I think we can at mention everyone there. Uh, 
Um, yeah, yeah, we've got that, but I think also Michael might be talking to um, what some other projects have done in the past, which like here's, for example, in the Zoom chat here uh, from Fastify, where Mateo just opened an issue that said, you know, Fastify Charter Review, and, and here, here's, here's the link. Um, so is that what you mean? Michael? Yeah, that's, that's that. what I'm, that's yeah. what I'm thinking so that there's a clear place to have a plus one. And you know, mm -hmm. that then stays there versus if like we plus one the checklist. I'm not sure if it's as clear, maybe you could checklist the uh, comment or something. But I think this makes it easily yeah. discoverable. There's an issue there. Somebody goes and looks, they can find it. It's in the top of the list. Plus I'll file one, that right now. One, and we'll close it once we say we have enough people. So, okay, thanks. Um, cool. So thanks for, for taking a minute to go take, take a look at that. It's really important um, for just sort of our last, uh, you know, onboarding steps um, and very helpful to the projects. So thank you very much. Um, the next, any other business item? Uh, is just to call out that we have uh, two uh, working sessions coming up in May. And we should uh, determine what we want to do, what projects we want to work on with that time. The last couple um, that we have taken on include our um, technical project strategy, uh, which was last week. Um, and then prior to that was JS Landia. And we've done some sessions on DEI and um, Code of, uh, code of conduct improvements. Um, on that note, I, we, do, we do have a PR um, on some COC improvements that were, was driven out of those, those sessions, ready for your review. Um, so we could use one of those working sessions to um, memorialize that PR or, uh, and or take up an additional uh, improvement, which we, we had identified a short list. So, that is one, uh, one, one option. Um, a second option is, you know, going back to the technical project strategy. We had a, actually, that seemed to be a topic that there were several avenues that we didn't quite follow all the um, paths of in our first session. Um, but obviously the options are boundless, in fact. And I'm, I'm just curious if anybody has a uh, preference or dealer's choice. <laughs> we talk about Slack. I'm also keen to talk about just like improving people's experience on Slack. What's, so, what's the issues with the experience on Slack? Just this context? Oh, just or? like making it like really welcoming and, you know, making it easier to find sub chats that you might be interested in or, you know, that, that kind of thing. Useful. There's like 1,400. One thing... Go ahead. Sorry, uh, I got a cough for a second. Uh, I, think, I think something that might be useful would be a little bit more guidance on like, what acceptable use for the projects is like i don't think there's been any problems but i think uh having some like pointers on like what it could be used for uh would be helpful in like making it more of a a, a good space for to actually like the projects to engage uh not that like like i think node has done a okay job i've also been the one doing it so I, of course i'm gonna think it's an okay job but like in setting things up um but yeah, like having having you know different kind of recommendations on how to do things. Um, we might also want to go down the path of something like uh, what CNCF does for the Kubernetes Slack, where it's all managed through YAML, and like people can't create random channels because like I can just create channels, uh, which some random person could also come create channels and like not great channels or something, or like name things with bad names or something like that, and we'd have to do do work. Um, and that that might also help kind of codify how how this experience goes a bit more too, uh, if, if we kind of bake that in from the beginning of this discussion. But uh, yeah. So.
So it sounds like uh, Tierney would love to talk about Slack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have opinions about Slack. <laughs> uh, other other um, ideas or preferences? Okay. All right. Well, let's let's do um, let's do Slack and also the uh, kind of follow up slash take two of um, the, that initial exploration on tech project strategy that we started. Yeah. One other than... idea could be maybe identifying other potential collaboration spaces that we would see would be helpful for the CPC to help drive. Michael, what do y'all think? Sorry, I was just distracted for a second. What was the question again? Maybe use a working session to identify some other, you know, uh, collaboration space uh, topics that we would want to encourage. Yeah, that's a good idea. Or, or I mean, we could continue on sort of related to that. We could continue on with the strategy. You know, we we're trying to come up with that sort of project areas or I forget the word. The you project portfolio strategy. Right. Yeah, I think we still have a bunch to work on that. So that would, Agreed. That would be a good one. Cool. Um, well, I, we've got many weeks worth of meetings potentially. Um, I will take the opportunity to call out issue um, 739, which has that schedule for the rest of the year. Um, and so if there's actually a session that you want to host or drive for a working meeting, for example, feel free to go edit that issue, make yourself a little, you know, spot, I'm super do it, you know? Uh, so otherwise I'll, I'll pester you once a month <laughs> <laughs> and probably more. So there you go. Um, cool. And then uh, the last, uh, the last thing that I uh, wanted to share was, was actually that um, pull request that I mentioned earlier. Um, so the group had been meeting um, for a couple of weeks and then a small group went and took a pass at, um, uh, at updating. We've got a couple of outstanding sort of questions and comments, which I think are perfectly fine for us to work out on, our pull, on this pull request. But um, thanks to Michael and Anton and Mateo and Joe and Sarah and Divya and others for their um, work on this you know, draft of the document. So we're ready for, for broader CPC um, comment uh, and input. And I just tried to port over all of our, all of the sort of outstanding comments on from, from the doc, from our Google doc. So reviews welcome there. Um, and that happened right before this meeting. So I don't suspect anybody has had a chance to read it. <laughs> so there you go. Um, cool. Any other business? Um, oh, Tierney's got a great little note. Uh, Joe ran unopposed at the Node.js ComCom and will continue to serve as the ComCom rep. Yay, Joe. And Abstentia, of course. Thank you, Joe, for continuing to do that. Yes. Uh, other project news or anything fun? Anything fun? Nothing fun. Well, you have squirrels that are going to fall through your yeah. ceiling. I don't want to be sure what's going to beat that. What is going on with the squirrels? I don't know. I just hear, like, in our walls, you could just hear it scratching away. I'm just waiting for it to break through the drywall any second and just jump on my face. I, I had that the other day and I banged on the wall a few times and they went away. So you can try that. Oh, I've been banging on the wall. I don't oh. think these, these are New York squirrels. <laughs> They're okay. not interested. They like, not afraid of anything. That's great. <laughs> All righty. Well, I think uh, uh, the squirrel report being concluded, <laughs> I will stop our recording. <laughs> uh, there we go.